promote all this uh, craziness in Greece, I spoke to Nicholas Economides, the professor of economics uh, from New York University. Well, you know, there have been uh, accumulated sell orders, uh, and the stock market um, opened uh, about 23% down. Now, in the end of the day, it was about 16% down. But wor what worries me about the stock market and is that certain key companies, banks, were down 30%. And um, that was the down limit. They couldn't go below 30%. We, and they have a lot of accumulated sell orders, which have not been executed. So it's very likely that tomorrow or the next few days, they're going to, down, they're going to go down further, which will also make the general index go further. So it's a reflection of how bad the economy is and that the prospects for the economy are not great right now. Um, I think, though, that if, you, if we give it a week, the stock market is going to stabilize, and then we can look again and see what are the stable levels uh, at which we will find ourselves. So he here's my question. Normally, a country invents a currency, then they invent a banking system, then they invent some regulatory systems in place, and then they get the stock market going. In this particular case, Greece essentially has no banking system, right? It's on life support. I, I just don't see how or why anybody would even deal with the stocks at this point when the basic fundamentals of the economy are in such uh, dire shape. I would assume that most of the efforts should be in stabilizing the banking system and getting them uh, self-sufficient, right? Well, they need to be rec recapitalized. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the equity of the banks has disappeared. Um, and the, uh, th the ability of the banks to make money has uh, been diminished greatly by uh, the general situation Greece finds itself in and also the capital controls that have been imposed. So they need to be recapitalized. When they do get recapitalized, let's say something like 10 to 25 billion will be needed. Okay, so when they get recapitalized, uh, the first... Um, entities that are going to lose money are going to be the stockholders. And the biggest stockholder right now is uh, the Greek state uh, and then the private stockholders. Uh, that's why you see the banks being so hurt in the, in the stock market. So the fact that they are so tremendously hurt in the stock market doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot function well. They can still function okay. Uh, if we get uh, a bit further uh, and figure out how banks can work under capital controls. That's essentially the real question in yeah. Greece. Well, it doesn't work. I mean, I can answer that for you now. It, it, there's no such, there's no point in history that shows us capital contro controls with banks has been ever good for the economy, let alone good for bank profits. Um, let me get to another topic here re regarding the bailout. This has been a, it's not been good. I thought a few weeks ago that we had a done deal, everybody would agree, uh, and everybody would be on board, and we could not talk about this ever again, but here we are talking about it again, that there are some that are opposed to the current bailout deal, and it's not necessarily Europe, it's really the IMF, and Greece has made its own concessions, apparently it's not been enough. I, I just don't know what to make of all of this. Do we, it doesn't seem like we have a deal, in, or is this just politics? Well, there are two different camps that are against, that are against the deal. Uh, one is uh, the hardliners in Germany, Mr. Schäuble, doesn't really like the deal. Uh, to some extent, I wouldn't worry so much about the IMF. All, all the IMF is asking is a restructuring of the debt, which will happen sooner or later, so they just ask it for it sooner so they can participate in the program. But the other big force that is against the deal is about a third of the deputies of the governing party, Syriza. And that's a serious problem because they don't vote for the laws that uh, are needed to go forward. And Mr. Tsipras, the prime minister, has to rely on the votes of the opposition to pass any laws. That's a very weird situation to be in uh, in the parliamentary system. So I worry about these two big forces, first the hardline Germans, second the one-third uh, left of the of, or part of the, of the Syriza party. These forces together could bring down the deal, and I worry about that. Okay, I mean, look, there's no deal then. I mean, the Germans are very important. Obviously, the MPs in the, Greece, uh, in, in the Greek administration are very important as well. I mean, these are very key players that you're talking about. It sounds like there is no agreement. 
if, if there is a final decision on this and a deal does fall apart, what does that mean ultimately for Greece? Does that mean the end of all this discussion and they basically have to leave uh, the euro or, or is that premature? Well, I, I think that the, what we see is that the Germans are divided and the Greeks are divided. That's yeah, serious. But mean. it's not necessarily the end of the deal. There is still a possibility for the deal to happen. And uh, Mrs. Merkel has been pushing hard for the deal to happen. And so has the Greek prime minister. So th there is still a very good chance that the deal is going to happen. Now, if it falls apart, that will be a huge disaster for Greece, uh, a, a disaster of, uh, uh, I cannot even describe it, of huge proportions. Uh, people are going to lose at least 50 percent of their deposits. Uh, prices are going to skyrocket. People are going to be able to buy only one third of what they used to buy uh, in the market. There will be significant inflation. Uh, Greece will become really a third world country. Uh, and the prospect of that disaster is so big, so huge, that even the present prime minister, who was elected saying he will do exactly the opposite of the deal with the Europeans, eventually did sign this deal. And I think he will be keep pushing for that deal.